Do you want to see how you can go from this to this? Stay tuned. Welcome to the Brew Bros channel, my friends. You're obviously here because you've bought one of these or been given one, in which case, big thanks. Uh, maybe you're interested in brewing your own beer or you're, uh, you've been following the channel for a while. Um, or perhaps you're just anti-bald or maybe an ex-girlfriend who's here for a dig, in which case, welcome. Views are views. And a special hello to all the bald brothers out there. This could be the day it all starts for you, your first creation, day one of your own craft brewery, the first brick in the brewing empire. Whatever happens next, we hope you enjoyed the kit and the process. Let's take a look inside the box. Okay, wow, look at those handsome fellows. Look at that guy on the left, what a stag. So we have some yeast, we have some sanitizer, dextrose, one nice beer mat, the all important grain net, some hops, our thermometer, some instructions, our Burrell, our Burrell Williams, <laughs> that's the way I tell them, a uh, keg stopper and a bung, an airlock, and then our grain mix, and there we have it. So, just two things before we get started. Please ask any questions you want in the comments below. We're very happy to help you along. Uh, please also sub now. You'll see tips both for these kits, uh, the steps that you can take next to progress your brewing, plus plenty of regular content for the beer lover and home brewer on the channel. Hit it! You'll need two pots, one around six liters and another around three liters, plus a funnel, spoon, bottled or tap water, some beer to drink and two bags of ice. The instructions say to put five and a half liters and four and a half liters in your large pot so you can then measure from the water line to the top. This assumes that your pot doesn't have the uh, internal volume markings. The reason is that later on you'll need to know how much beer you have in the pot which is very important. Add four liters of water in your pot and heat to 70 degrees centigrade. Then fit your brain net. Attention, we're about to enter step one, the mash. Mashing is all about maintaining a constant temperature. The closer you can keep your temperature between 63 to 68 degrees, the better your beer will be. And it's a go. The smell you get when you add your malt to the water is one of the pleasures of brewing. Savour it, my friends. The mix we're using is 95% pale malt and 5% crystal malt, which gives it a slight toffee flavour and colour. You'll need to keep adding and removing your pot from the heat. The grain retains heat quite well, so it will spend more time off the heat than on. Look at that temp, bang on. After 60 minutes, raise the temp to 70 degrees C and stir continuously for what's called mashing out. Meanwhile, start heating three liters of water in your second pot to 70 degrees. Now we come to the stage called sparging, but first we need to separate the grain from our liquid, which we now call wort. A large elastic band is a powerful ally which is why we've included one to make life easier. Gradually raise the net out of the wort. Spargers, prepare for glory! Then sparge away. Gently rinse the grain with your sparge water to extract the last of the grainy goodness. The spent grain can be used for a variety of things, but I favour making bread. We have a video on that, link above. Ooh, hello, lovely loaf, lovely, very moist. 
This part is easy, so get some beers on the go. Just heat the wort until you get to a nice gentle boil and hold it there for an hour. Crank your heat to the max and let's get this a bubbling. Add your hops. Here we're using Citra and Amarillo. Five grams at the start, five grams 45 minutes in and the remainder for the final five minutes. That's it, you're making beer, baby. Ooh, steamy. Get your sink ready with some ice and water. Mix your sanitizer in a bottle, second sink or large bowl with two to three liters of warm water. Then place your pot in the sink. Chill your wort down to 21 degrees. I like to stir up a whirlpool for a minute or so because it chills quicker and collects the sediment in the center. Attention! Cleaning and sanitizing is vital from here and it's part of the process where things can head south if you're not on your game. Batches of beer with infections aren't fun and have wrecked many home brewers' dreams and aspirations. It's not complicated, just make sure that from this point onwards anything that comes into contact with your wort is rinsed with your sanitizer solution. And that's it. Thermometer in the sanitizer first. Clean and sanitize the net and funnel. And keg. Then place the funnel in the keg with your net. I like to double up the net so it keeps as much sediment out as possible. Then with your wort at 21 degrees, pour away. The more you pour, the cloudier it gets, so you may need to encourage it through the net with a sanitized spoon. Discard the wort of the sediment unless you like beer flavored porridge. Now it's time to unleash or pitch the yeast. Give it a shake to aerate the wort and say rise and shine to the yeast. Fit the airlock in the sanitized bung before you place it in the keg, or you might lose the bung inside, which will ruin your day. Trust me, I speak from experience on this. Then half fill your airlock with sanitizer, and that's it, that's the brew day over. Twenty-four hours later. Two weeks later. Remove your airlock and bung, pour in the dextrose. Fit your stopper, then keep in a quiet place for two more weeks. Two weeks later. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Two to three days before the end of the two weeks, put your keg in the fridge so it can cold crash. This will not only chill your delicious beer, it will also help it to clear by making the sediment fall to the bottom. Look at that pure nectar. Nice clarity with a bit of foam. So here we are, this is the tasting of the classic IPA from a uh, brewery in a box. Cheers everyone. Cheers. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. It is good. Really, yeah, really impressed with that. That's lovely. Standard kind of traditional IPA. Very much. English pub, beer garden. Yeah, that's what you'd expect, isn't it? Very happy. It's quite fruity. Yeah. It's not. It's not too over hopped. It's. Um, I'd, I'd say it's quite nicely balanced. Mm. It's plenty of body. Yeah. The body's brilliant. There's loads of body there, which is what you'd expect from that style of beer. Yeah. Clarity is great. It's just a very good, it's just a very good day-to-day -day drinking IPA. Kind of fruity, isn't it? it you is know, fruity. like a what kind of fruit would you say though? Like um, 
You clearly don't know. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just trying to think. It's not your usual kind of citrusy fruits, is it? It's, no. Uh... So maybe kind of like a light, lighty sort of passion fruit sort of deal. Mm. I I like it. It's it's not it's not excessively carbonated. Um, that's because in the mini kegs you can't you can't you can't carbonate too excessively, otherwise they blow up, which is not a good thing. <laughs> that's lovely. It's good. Mm. So we're going to get to drinking the whole keg. <laughs> not that we're advocating uh, drinking <laughs> uh, excessive drinking, but we are. So you guys take care. Thanks for tuning in. You get brewing from your brewery in a box. We'll see you again mm. soon. Ciao. <laughs>